One thing about me is I love a good origin story. So here are the origin stories of 10 technology terms that you probably never realized. Number one, why do we call Bluetooth Bluetooth? Let me tell you how a simple joke became a technology that we can't live without. The year is 1997. The Ericsson Mobile Company in Sweden, in collaboration with Intel, Nokia, and a few other companies, are getting ready to release this new technology to the world that allows devices to connect wirelessly. But before they released it, they ran into a problem. The name options they had for their new invention, like PAN, short for Personal Area Network, or Radio Wire, were either not marketable enough or already trademarked. They had no choice but to publicly name it what they had temporarily been calling it all along. One of the engineers from Intel, that also happened to be a history buff and was learning more about Sweden and Scandinavia in general at the time, read a book about a Scandinavian king named Harold Gormson, who was not only known for uniting Scandinavia, but was also known to have a dark colored tooth, which awarded him the name Bluetooth. As a joke, the Intel engineers suggested that they call it Bluetooth until they find an actual name for it, since it would unite devices like King Harold United Scandinavia. The Bluetooth logo is actually Harold's initials in the Scandinavian alphabet. Number two, if 10 to the second power is 100 and 10 to the third power is 1000, what's 10 to the hundredth power? It's called a Google and it's where Google got its name. But when they went to purchase the domain name, they spelled it wrong, spelling it ending with the L-E instead of an O-L. They decided to keep it anyway. Number three, we know that if we want to copy someone on an email, we can CC them, but why do we call it CC? CC is short for carbon copy. And before copy machines were invented, it was a way for people to copy their documents. You would place a piece of carbon paper between the page you wanted to write or type on and another blank page below it. As you wrote, the pressure applied to the carbon paper would leave an imprint on the blank page to create a copy. Even though carbon paper isn't used anymore, it may remind you of something we still use today, known as carbonless paper or NCR paper, where NCR stands for no carbon required. Number four, Every so often I'll learn about the origin of a word that we use daily and be shocked by how much the original meaning has evolved into representing something totally different. For instance, when we dial a phone number for the past 65 years, that meant we just pressed a few buttons. But the word came from the fact that old phones had a rotary dial that you had to turn every time you wanted to select a number. Or when we talk about footage, like camera footage, it comes from the fact that film reels were measured in feet back in the days of early filmmaking. Another one of those words is thumbnail. When we talk about thumbnails today, we're usually talking about a picture, like a profile picture or even like a YouTube thumbnail. It took me years to realize that we called it a thumbnail because back when the concept of having a small photo or graphic as a button to represent something was introduced, it was meant to be as small as an actual thumbnail, like the nail on your thumb. Did you already know that or am I just late? Let me know in the comments. Number five, another example is the word inbox. Inbox now means a digital place where all the emails sent to us live. But before that digital place, many office workers would have physical boxes on their desks for incoming and outgoing mail, which was shortened as their inbox and outbox. Number six. Okay, one last email reference. We know spam to be junk mail, and you could probably guess that the original term spam mail probably has something to do with the canned meat spam, which is true. But the full story is that it comes from a Monty Python sketch where the word spam is just said repeatedly. What you got then? Well, there's egg and bacon, uh, egg, sausage, and bacon, egg and spam, egg, bacon, and spam, <laughs> egg, bacon, sausage, and spam. Spam, bacon, sausage, and spam. So in the early 90s, as email was becoming more widely used, the term spam was used to describe the flood of unwanted and repetitive messages that would clog your inbox. Fun fact, the Python programming language also got its name from Monty Python. Number seven, if you think Wi-Fi stands for wireless fidelity, that's incorrect. Wi-Fi doesn't stand for anything. Once it was invented, the Wi-Fi Alliance, the group responsible for marketing it, wanted an easy, catchy name for it. So they branded it as Wi-Fi as a play on the abbreviation Hi-Fi, which is short for high fidelity. This led people to believe that if Hi-Fi is high fidelity, then Wi-Fi is wireless fidelity. And in their defense, when the company initially released it, their slogan was the standard for wireless fidelity. They later came out and said that they only did that because people would assume that Wi-Fi was an acronym and would want an explanation for it. But in reality, Wi-Fi is just a random brand name, kind of like Bluetooth. Number eight, a bit is the smallest possible unit of computer data and can only ever be one or zero. Because of this, a bit is considered a binary digit. Bit is a combination of those words. Number nine, any combination of eight bits makes one byte. So one megabyte is around 1 million bytes and one gigabyte is around 1 billion bytes. 
The computer scientist that coined the term bite wanted to initially spell it as bite, as a play on bit, but he didn't want people to confuse the two words, which is why he spelled it with a Y. I created a really detailed video all about bits and bytes that I'll link below if you wanna learn more about what data is and how it's stored. Number 10, the word pixel was actually created as an abbreviated way to say picture element. Pixel is a combination of the words pix, like pix, aka pictures, and element. Even though the term picture element had been used to describe the smallest unit of an image even as early as decades prior, the word pixel wasn't officially published until 1965. In that same video about bytes, I also talk about pixel data and how that's stored, so go watch it. It's good, I swear. Anyways, if you can think of any other terms, feel free to post them in the comments. And if you enjoyed this, subscribe for more easy to understand tech videos.